Hey there folks, Martin Pavey here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to understand your own nature. Before we do that, please do like and subscribe and share to spread this very important message. Have you noticed, okay, that people are constantly trying to mould you and get you to do things and agree to things that you mm. don't agree with. And the reason that people actually ask questions is because it's far easier to issue orders. This is something I've been talking about quite a bit recently. But it's easier to issue orders rather than to actually look at their own behaviour. And the truth about finding and understanding your own nature is that you have to learn to define boundaries. And I'm afraid as pessimistic as this sounds, people don't like you putting fences up around your time, your energy, your well-being. Everybody wants to invade, okay? And if you leave yourself completely open, you're just going to be <laughs> receiving all the firing shots and the slings and the arrows all the time. And you're not going to have the mental and physical space to be able to actually do what it is that you really want to do. And we live in a culture, and I, I don't know if this has been around for a long time, um, but I know it's certainly been an issue in, in my lifetime, I'm in my early 40s, that the idea of taking time for yourself and saying no to people, that this idea of selfishness, is this really, really terrible thing. But when you actually look at the, the word itself, because things take on connotations and, oh, you know, I don't like the tone of that, bit selfish. Well, if you look at the word self-ish, it's self, it's you. So it means that you're concentrating on you. Now, the connotation of selfish is that you are mean or you're nasty or you're neglectful of other people's feelings and wants and desires. But it's perfectly okay for them to demand things of you, but not the other way around. And a huge part of understanding your own nature is actually to take a step back, to be quite courageous and defiant to draw up fences around the things that really, really matter. And I've talked in my time about openness, talked about it quite a bit, but I think that I made the mistake of being open, of being open-minded and willing and flexible to a degree. I think I confused that with with actually how to even put this um of of just being too available to other people you know the sort of the openness that anybody can say whatever they want and they can do whatever they want to you they're, they're two they're two different things you can be open minded but you can also at the same time you can say no it's a really powerful thing to say no. And you can say no in many different ways without even having to say the word again. I was talking about this recently. You can say, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to do it anyway. Maybe you don't approve, but this is what's working for me at the moment. And that's where the courage really comes in. You have to be brave. Because even people that you really trust and you believe are on your side will react very, very negatively. And they can be and, and, and can be quite hostile when you actually start to sort yourself out. And there was, funnily enough, there was a I watched a lot of Jordan Peterson in my time quite a few years ago. And I was on lots of his um, live, you know, live streams on YouTube, various places. 
and there was this chap on there who actually started a YouTube channel at that time. I'm going to say this was probably 2017, 2018, something like that. He started a YouTube channel where he just started talking about all of the, you know, struggles and things that he was going through. And that particular phrase, it's stuck in my head and things, I have a, I have a very, very good memory. Um, and I, I went today to look at the YouTube channel. I sort you know, sorting myself out. Um, and the thing is now, from a brand new YouTube channel to a few years later, it's now got 34,000 subscribers. That to me is so inspiring. What can actually grow, you know, from the teeniest of acorns to the mightiest of oak trees? What can actually happen when you dedicate yourself to something? And I'm going to show you this tiny little thing here. Um, it's, it brings me a lot of joy. This is my, this is my little counter. Um, and what I do is when I'm commenting, I was having pieces of paper to tally how many comments I was making um, and on Twitter, on replying to people's posts as a way, an organic way of, uh, of publicising my account and the services that I'm, I will offer, you know, to, in exchange for money. Um, and every single time that you click that little, that little ticker, it makes this very satisfying little tick. And it's really, really important that you prioritise your life in a way that you can have all of the things that you want, but that you don't allow yourself to be taken over by the howling of the wind is my current phrase du jour. The howling of the wind of other people's requests, well, usually not requests, orders and advice and expectations. Just because the wind howls does not mean you have to topple. It's your life and you must constantly remind yourself that it's your life, that you are allowed and actually it's incumbent upon you to stand up for yourself because if you don't no one else will no you you create the world for yourself by what you say yes to and what you say no to and it people find it i found it fantastically uncomfortable to say no to assert what it is that I want, to know the best for myself. And the more that I understand my own nature, which actually at the, at the fundamental root of it is a powerful nature, very creative, very sprightly and jubilant and joyful. The more that I realise that, the, the more I realise that most of the stuff that you and I worry about is absolutely meaningless. It's absolutely meaningless. Everybody has their motivations for what they say, what they ask, what they order. But you have yours. And never ever let that light be diminished by somebody just trying, as I say, trying to mould you, trying to get their way, trying to make themselves feel better, but at your expense. But the only person that can actually control whether it's at your expense is you. That's it. If you want to live in a world of victimisation and no free will, by all means, you go for it, my love. But... I don't want that for myself. I don't want it for you. I'm sure that deep down you don't want that for yourself either. So start standing up for yourself and give yourself the time and space to truly understand by asking serious questions 
What do I want? What makes me feel peaceful? What brings me alive? What would I like to do with my life? And any other serious questions that have been nagging away at you, don't avoid them, embrace them. Because the answers are the key to your freedom. The answers are the key to your happiness. It's your life. So thank you very much for listening. I appreciate all of you. I'm very, very touched by the progress that's, that I'm making with this channel, with your support. So thank you. Please do like and subscribe and share to spread this very important message. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Ciao for now.